Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. I always say this. Wherever you are in the world, it's good to be with you. And it's always good to be with my very good friend and colleague, Phoebe Francis, who reminds me that I should tell you, listeners, now that I'm a certified master of the Leadership Challenge, and I have been so for over 10 years, and uh, we are the Leadership Challenge Middle East. Phoebe is the facilitator of the Leadership Challenge, and he brings so much wisdom and so many ideas uh, uh, to our discussion, our conversation. So good morning, Phoebe. Good afternoon, Graham. I know it, it is good afternoon at, at, at that part of your world. And uh, uh, greetings to all our uh, viewers and listeners. Thank you for being with us today. Yeah. Phoebe, I'm I'm curious about how things have been going for you. Pretty well. <laughs> that that that's that is very interesting, Graham. You know, like curiosity is what drive us forward. Wow. It is it is something that creates the engine, the motivation, the drive for all of us. Wow. So wasn't it clever that I should ask what <laughs> say I'm curious about what you been doing this week. Absolutely. Curious is such an important attribute for leaders. So we're giving this the title of Leadership and Curiosity. You okay with that, Phoebe? Fantastic. That is a brilliant title for our discussion today. And I am sure that our viewers and listeners will find it uh, inspiring and um, too much to take and apply in their work yeah. and workplace well i will give credit as i always hope i do it was phoebe who suggested we talk about curios and curiosity so that's the path we're taking because he suggested it and i'm pleased that he did i the curiosity of, of course is is related to innovation and innovation comes it's a lot of what we do in, in, in terms of leadership challenge. And I know that Phoebe has some certain some qualifications in that area of innovation. M many organisations regard innovation, their number one, very close to leadership as a, their need. Innovation. And be, innovation is related to, create, to, to curiosity. We're not going to innovate unless we are curious about something, right? Yeah. I, he often reminds me of the word, two words that I often say, and that is, what if? So let me ask this question. Phoebe, do you think that curious, curiosity go with what a manager does? Yeah, Graham, one thing which I want to uh, highlight is, you know, in when, when it is management, what I often see is follow the rules do what is being laid out and they look into the processes which we need to complete as as part of the work but you know curiosity have a different meaning and quite often managers in the in the meaning of definition of managing as you always highlight that curiosity doesn't have much role and that is where you know leadership is everyone's business comes in where curiosity leads to what we call as a secret ingredient that brings change, change for better. And I, I, I'm remembering a story which uh, happened in my uh, learning space during my uh, master's. I like to thank my um, uh, faculty member at, who was uh, guiding us at that time. You know, he, he always said, uh, for example, when, when we come with uh, some, sometimes I found this as an opportunity and he was actually encouraging us to be curious, explore the unknown. What, what else, similar to what, what you mentioned, what if, what else can we do? And I think that still resonates with me. And, and it all led to being uh, coming to Middle East as well as meeting you. Because when I came across you facilitating a session in, in Dubai, in the Dubai, um, Men's College, it was, I think, um, uh, one of my senior colleagues who mentioned your name that led to me getting curious to see and search you in the Google 
and I found out the leadership challenge and you, your profile, you being the certified, first certified master in the Middle East. So, you know, it all led because <laughs> that that curious nature, which we, if we start cultivating that, it, it can lead to different paths and different ways in which. So still, after so many years, we are now having this conversation, which, which was because of that curiosity. So as uh, the question you ask, in the managerial uh, space, if we can add curiosity, <laughs> the impact will be, I, I will say, it is one of the secret ingredients which make managers leaders. Yeah, and one of the problems with managers is they use this old line, we've always done it this way. Hmm, right? Managers, I'm sure, should not be doing, I'm sure, and I know they shouldn't be using that line. We've got to be looking for new ways to do things. And what is the third practice of the leadership challenge? Challenge the process. Challenge the process. Ask, is there a better way? Uh, it's it's like I always say, and I must have said this in our discussions before, when we finish a project, when we finish a, whatever, it might be a short term or longer term, we've just built the Burj Khalifa. And I'm sure that they, that even though they've got a great result and they did things in that building process that had never been done before. I mean, you know, they had to pump concrete up 138 or 40 flights of the floors and, you know, it never been done before. So how are we going to do it? They did some amazing things, but I'm really sure when they finished, they said, how could we do it better? What could we do differently to get a better result? That is fundamental to curiosity. We've done this, but let's look for other ways, better ways to do things. And this is a really strong part for leaders to involve Others in this discussion, not just, I've come up with an idea, I want you to follow this, but to have everybody being curious about the way we do things. Now, in the Leadership Challenge, and I'm talking about workshops that we do, and I'm talking about Challenge the Process, we have an activity that's based on uh, new things that have been developed over the years. And what was the, the the reason for this new invention that we now accept and live with? And I'm reminded of this because of a discussion that I had this morning. One of the items that's put up for people to consider is what was the source of the, of the idea for Velcro? We use Velcro so often these days. It's, it's part of our daily life almost, right? I had a Velcro strip on my briefcase on this corner. Here, right, that's the Velcro, holds it together. Velcro is so adapt so useful in our daily lives. But where did that come from? Do you know where hmm. that, that idea was, Phoebe? No, I, I'm curious to know, Graham. Tell it's me more. None. Well, let me just share this with you, Phoebe. NASA, we all know NASA, they fly things into space said, we need to, to cre create a space suit that doesn't have buttons, doesn't have zippers, doesn't have studs that hold it together. What are we going to do? So they were curious and they have curious minds about what we could do to create a space suit that didn't have those items but stayed together on the person. Well, they came up with Velcro, but do you know what? was the inspiration for Velcro. It is an item, an item, part of a plant. And that plant grows in the Middle East because I checked when I was there. We call it a burr, B-U-R-R. -R. And the burr is a t small round part of the plant. It's got spikes all around it. And when mm. you through these burrs that are growing in the lawn or the wherever they in the field, they, the burrs will collect on your trousers because the burrs go and they and so depending on if there's a lot of burrs around, you can oh my gosh, I got these burrs on my trousers, got to get them off. And yeah. so I was curious about burrs and how they worked, 
And they took that idea from what they were seeing in nature and they said, why don't we create something that's similar to that that then has these pieces locking together tightly, adhering together, mm. call it Velcro. Mm. That was a, an idea that we've got to find this solution. What are we going to do? How are we going to do it? How can we do this? And they use their curiosity to, to explore options. And if someone came in and said, look, I've got this burr in my trousers, what can we do with that? Oh, nothing. No. no, let's just look at that. Now, the idea of curiosity must must start from a very early age. And this is, this is about leadership, I know, but I'm going to encourage any parents who are listening to this to encourage curiosity in their children from a very early age. Quite often children say, uh, I've been a, through a period of time when my children would say why um, 1,700 times a day almost, you know, when the, it was almost as if they've learned this concept. Why, Daddy? Why is this happening? Why do I do this? So they're curious by asking why. And they're constantly asking why. Will you stop asking why I'm busy? <laughs> but we can't suppress curiosity at an early age. We've got to encourage children to ask why. Why does that happen? How does that occur? And then they, mm. and that concept of encouraging curiosity must be maintained as a leader, not only that he or she asks why, why does that occur? How? Tell me how that happens. Or how can we do it better? But encouraging everybody on the team, everybody that they're leading, to also ask the same question. Why? Do we need to do this? Should we do this? Well, I don't, yeah. Yeah, we need to do this. Is there another way? Some years ago in Dubai, there was a, a gentleman who was a manager of a particular area, and he was doing reports every month. And, and depending on the type of report, it could take him two days in a month to write a particular report. Other reports might be short at time. But he said to his 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 manager, this particular report, why are we still doing this particular report that I am taking two days a month to put together? Oh, I don't know, said the, his manager. I'll check with the general manager. And response when he came with it was he said, I've checked with him. We haven't needed that report for two years. So for two years, this gentleman was preparing this report and sending it up the line when it wasn't needed. Mm, mm. The line were thinking, oh, it must be needed for this. Oh, okay, someone's asked for it, so we'll know. Oh, okay, it's good. But he said, why? Well, tell me why. He was curious to say, why are we still doing this? So the why question has got to be asked. The how question has got to be asked because we might be able to find a better way of doing it. Tell me about uh, this. Remi this reminds me an incident in my uh, one of my workplaces. You know, we we in a financial service organization, uh, we, we had an account opening challenge. That is, the account opening forms have a couple of pages to be filled in to complete it and send it to the operations team to get the accounts opened. And what happens in the process was, you know, often. Uh, there was sometimes the client's signature missing in one page because there was almost 10, eight pages which they have to fill in. And especially when new sales executives are coming in, when they go to the client, they get the signature, sometimes they miss one signature. Now what happens is out of uh, 10 applications received, <laughs> four or five are getting returned. So there is a courier cost coming in, then there is the rechecking cost happening with the operation team. Client is unhappy with the process. And this led, uh, led to one of my friend who was in that uh, space in operation. Why is this, uh, this, kind, this much rejection happening? What is the issue? And the, he was curious <laughs> to know what is happening. So he decided to check in with uh, some of the sales team members who are moving into the customer. So one is uh, the, the, there was no checklist with the people, which are the key spaces where a signature is required. So that is one he created to help people. 
then he 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 again uh, uh, reviewed the uh, uh, application form because application form is part of the contract you know the client is signing with the financial service organization and he brought it down to two pages instead of <laughs> making it eight or nine so saving with respect to the um, sheets paper re reduction in paper then it led to sales team very familiar okay these are the two places he got it vetted by the legal team to be launched into the world for the organization so it Money. reduced the rejection so the curiosity of what can we do to reduce that what can we do to help uh, our stakeholders our sales team our clients in that process and it leads to overall improvement in customer service you know the people who their onboarding experience became smoother no yeah. so it was that simple curiosity from someone and i i, I and what happened was in that process uh, he was able to model that in the workplace, which led to many other process improvement within the department. So, uh, and and that becomes a you know <laughs> when a, a leader is modeling the way. So he he his curiosity is modeling the way. How can others be curious in my space? So we so know challenging the process become much more. Yeah, and it's saving money, right? It's improving the. <laughs> efficiency of the organization one element of this which is really important is as we know leaders establish the culture of the group right the culture comes from the behavior of the leader and his behavior is then modeled by others right quite simple yeah so, but i want to make yeah. a point which i think is fairly important when when a leader or anybody is asking why why are we doing this mm -hmm. well, how did you do that there is one possible response which we've got to change, and that response is that someone being asked that question could become defensive. Tell me why you're doing this. Oh, we well, always do it that way. Well, you have to do it. Yeah, but, well, okay, but or, or can you tell me how you do this? Well, it's just the way it's done, and how I, we do it. The person who's being asked the question may feel that if I share this how or why that or why is this person asking me anyway but if i share the how and the reasons why that, that it might be in some way a reflection on me negatively so i need to defend what's you know they go into defensive mode and defend what's being done and the reason why it's being done so the important thing for me as far as leaders are concerned in this situation is that they create a culture where we challenge the process, we create a culture where everyone knows that they are welcome and encouraged to be curious about why things are done a certain way. Everybody should be curious and understand that curiosity then can lead to innovation and innovation is going to lead to cost savings it's going to lead, lead to uh, improved procedures which are less onerous and shorter sh shorten the time and overall a better result but it's an attitude that needs to be cultivated by the leader so that everyone can also say to him they can say to the leader or he or she um why are you doing this? Mm. Why are you calling a, a staff, a team meeting every Monday morning? Now, the tone of the question shouldn't be offensive or offensive, you know, to be pr provoking, but rather a curious tone in your voice. The curious mm. tone mm. of the voice kind of says, I'm interested to know rather than I'm challenging why you're doing this. That's not going to prov provide a positive response. But if the tone of voice and the words that are used indicate that I'm interested to know why this is happening, because we may be able to come up with a better way of doing it, right? So the tone and the way the question's asked is critical so that the person responding is open in their reply. And, and that they are saying, well, um, you know, I've never thought about it. Let, let's, let's find another way. Okay, let's talk about this. 
I think Graham, when you, when you mentioned that, you know, um, the way of the tone of uh, approaching that, uh, that 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 is that is critical because you know, and you know, it, it is modeling the way within the organization again. What way am I reaching out to my people, and and uh, is it encouraging the heart? You know, the, one of the practices of again the leadership challenge, whether I am yes, I'm curious, but my curiosity is it leading to encourage more hearts in my workplace to come out, to think differently, to ask questions, as, as you mentioned. And that leads to better vision for yep. any organization, whether it is a home, whether it is an organization. You, uh, we, we can see how that transforms the workplace or the family environment in which if curiosity is driven with a compassion, with an uh, encouragement with a way of you know appreciation it can have a huge impact in whatever we are doing absolutely you know the more we encourage people to look for new and better ways to do things the more we encourage them to ask questions why and you know the the, the def defensiveness that I'm thinking of in some instances can be the manager saying, "Look, I'm too busy to worry about that. Let's just go on with doing the job." You know, we're going to spend time asking why we're doing it. It's been doing it that way for a long time. No, we, we, the attitude should be from the leader that curiosity is an attribute, a positive attribute that he should encourage from others as well. Encourage them to be curious. You know, we, we've, we, when we do have an attitude of curiosity, we find better ways to do things that are going to be better for us overall. Um, and and you know, so many of the the most important and significant inventions and things that we're living with these days have come from those two words that, you know, I'm fond of using. I'm, I love saying, what, what if? What if we didn't do this? Or what if we challenged and found a better way? But we also should be saying, why? Tell me why that's happening. Tell me how you're doing this. Not, I'm, I'm not saying tell me how to do it so that I can shut you down, but tell me how because I'm interested to, to find out. Sometimes when when we are watching a craftsman, let's just say he's a, a craftsman watchmaker, and he's and he's got his thing. And I'd be I'd be saying, how do you do that? My gosh, that's amazing! How, tell, show me how you, wow. Because we can have a wow moment when we understand how someone does something, which is not in our field of of knowledge, and but we we benefit from knowing or learning how things are done, even if we're not going to do them that way. I'm not going to become a Swiss watchmaker. But if I'm watching a watchmaker doing what he does, I, I learn the precision that's involved. And go, wow, this is so. We never know when that learning can be translated into something else that's related to the work that we are doing. So, but mm. I encourage curiosity. You know, curious curiosity for children is is as I said earlier so important to have them open to always asking. How did that happen, Dad? How how come? Because that encourages their creativity as well. And mm. know that the young mind is the most creative until it is then pushed down by society, which puts people in into boxes and has them conform. And so creatively is creativity is stifled or held back. But curiosity, creativity, that is the future of the world. It always has been. Uh, yeah, of course. When when I when I see the journey being in UAE from two thousand eight, it is all the curiosity which is leading to making this city grow like and very futuristic from the approach. And what, what you, you you can see the Ministry of Possibilities. <laughs> yeah, what a great the Ministry of Future. Yeah. Well, that... all thinking in that curious ray, cu curious <laughs> what we call, with that curious mind, which is leading to ripple effect of leadership behavior. Within... 
I've always said that Phoebe's a, a wise soul, and that suggestion of the ministry of possibilities is wonderful. In countries like Australia, if you said to the government, we're going to have a ministry of possibilities, people would say, what a waste of time. What are you doing? But it, it would absolutely be ideal in the UAE. And it's the sort of thing that Sheikh Mohammed, I'm sure, would say, that's a great idea, to have a ministry of possibilities, to be able to explore curiously what about this and what about that? and have minds in that department who are always looking curiously at doing things a different way. Yes, as you said, because I've lived in the UAE for 15 years and see, like you, and I've seen the wonderful changes that have occurred because there's been a, a, a vision that says we can be better, we can look for better ways of doing things, and we can think outside well, I hate the, I don't like the expression "think outside the box," but that's that's what they're doing, right? They're they're looking beyond their their sphere of influence at the start, and I think the idea of having a ministry of possibilities is just brilliant. Well done, Phoebe. Put that to. I the think uh, you know. Imagine that in in our organization, if we have a department of possibilities. Yeah. Well, where, where we apply the leadership challenge. And I, I, I like our viewers and uh, uh, listeners. Think about starting a department of possibilities. Yeah. What can what can we have? And, and make ensure that you follow the five practices of the leadership challenge to create curiosity. Absolutely. And I just want to reiterate that. What are these five practices? One is model the way. Second is inspire a shared vision, challenge the process, enable others to act, and five, encourage the heart. And I'm sure, you know, when you have that curiosity with compassion, with care, it is going to enable others to act. And that is going to encourage the heart. And that will definitely take you to your shared vision. Bring curiosity on, Graham. Absolutely. And they look, so much of what we talk about is directly tied into the five practices. And if the leader is modelling the way and being curious, that's encouraging others to be curious. If the leader's vision that's created has creativity in there as well, that is really, really important. Um, yeah. It, and if he then ties that in, of course, to challenge the process and enabling others to act where others are encouraged, encouraged to be curious. And then when their curiosity is paid off, of course, encourage the heart. I think, though, that we should we should uh, let Sheikh Mohammed know. You see, the, the, the idea of having a ministry of, of possibilities in, in the UAE is almost aligned to the fact that they have now a ministry for artificial intelligence, Right. So it's not yeah. a, not incompatible with that to have a ministry of possibilities. <laughs> what 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 we let's be curious. And how would it be to have a job where you went to work every day and you were curious? Now we know that the UAE, certainly Dubai rather, Dubai has a, a museum of the future, and the future is where curiosity is. The driver of the future is curiosity. So let's just wrap this up by saying children at an early age should be always encouraged to be curious and that curiosity should be continued. And when they get into the workplace, the leader should have, have established a culture of curiosity so that that can then change organisations positively. Phoebe, final. Yeah, yeah curiosity is lead to know that your your final words for our session this afternoon. Yeah, one, one, one more important aspect, you know, curiosity is the possibility hack which you can apply in your workplace, in your home, and see the difference which it can bring in. And friends, please always support us by subscribing, liking, 
and also spreading the messages we like to convey not mm -hmm. only to your connections but also through your social platforms cool. and join us on our facebook group the leadership challenge middle east where day by day there'll be even more information shared with you people who are going to join our newly formed group the leadership challenge facebook thank you very much phoebe it's been a pleasure as usual you have a great week and next week i will be curious to know how your week has been since this discussion that we have had thank you